Hey guys, Balkan Arctic here and something that I find really important when it comes to architecture is selling your project, selling your idea, making it stick in people's minds. That's how you get to, well, have your projects realized and built in real life. Uh, now, one of the ways that you can do that is through using diagrams. So diagrams are a really cool way of portraying what's the idea behind the project and what's your general thinking when it comes to your building. Uh, now, I really like big architects because they make some amazing diagrams and uh, I really try to create cool diagrams for my projects as well, both in school and in real life and in competitions. Pretty much any time where there is a chance to make a diagram, I think it's a good idea. Uh, so in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create this cool diagram that combines the construction and the installations and then the whole architectural building and then it shows it in just one view. I think they look really cool and I, I was thinking how do you make something like that in Revit and I found the solution of course so that's what I'm going to be showing you in today's uh, tutorial. Uh, but before we get into that, if, if you would like to learn more about Revit, either if you're a beginner, intermediate or at advanced level, I have all of those types of courses on my website, balkanarctic.com. There, I take the time to go in depth, so usually for several hours, about each independent Revit topic and just exploring it completely. So if you're interested, check it out. It's going to be the first link in the description. And also the second link in the description will get you to my Patreon. There, I have all of my Revit project files. So if you're interested in getting your hands on those, make sure to check it out. Okay, so without any further ado, Let's get straight into Revit. Okay, so here we are in Revit, and for this I'm going to be using the uh, sample project that comes uh, with Revit. The only reason for that is because it's really hard to get your hands on a really complex project that has both structure and MEP components uh, without that being owned by the client or the company or something like that, and I really want to retain the ability to share this file with you, so that's why I'm going to be using just the uh, Revit sample projects that just come with the software. Uh, now, if you don't know where to find them, it's actually quite simple. So uh, here you can just transfer to home and then when you go to file and go to open, uh, if you just ho hover over this for a moment, uh, you're going to get this menu and then if you go down, you have sample projects or sample files here on the bottom. So if you just click on this, it's going to open up in open dialog and here as you can see we have some sample projects. Now if you click on one of these, you will have the ability to kind of scroll down and the the one that we're going to be using is going to be let's see the uh, the uh, RAC uh, advanced sample project so this is the architectural uh, part of the project and then uh, with that we're going to be linking up the let's see here we have the structure and then also somewhere is the MEP, but for that later on. So first we have to open this up. So this is the project, the RAC advanced sample project. And here make sure it says project and not family. And then you just click uh, open to well, open that up. So as soon as it opens up, it looks like this. I think it's like a school or something like that. Uh, this project comes with uh, Revit for a very long time. With all of Revit versions, you will get this project. And uh, anyways, now in order to explore this or to link it up with the structure and MEP, what you need to do is just go here to the Insert tab, go to Link Revit. Uh, and then it's in my case, it's going to open up sample projects. But if you can't find it, it's going to be wherever you installed your Autodesk Revit, just go to Autodesk to Revit 2020 and then to samples. And there you can find it. So that's where I am. And now let's find the structure one, which is this one. Hit open. And it's going to wait for a while. It's going to say, oh, it's already linked up to something else. So you just cancel out of that, but it's still going to load in those structure components. And as you can see, when it lights up like this, this big blue box that means the structure elements are loaded in or the file is linked up. Uh, next let's go to link Revit again and in this case we're going for this one uh, which is the advanced sample project uh, for MEP 
uh, but it, it's going to look like this. Uh, it doesn't look like the original project and the only reason for that is because this is just a kind of a, uh, a section boxed up view that shows just a segment of it but don't worry the whole file is there uh, and anyways then you just hit open and that will link up to this file as well. So now within one project we have pretty much everything linked up and something that you will notice is that this appears uh, over here so it's in the wrong place so if you're having trouble linking things up and making sure that everything uh, overlaps exactly how it should uh, well as you can see even uh, even Autodesk is having a uh, trouble managing that so as you can see here is where our sample project is for the uh, MEP so what I like to do is just move it out of the way a little bit zoom in and find one of these distinct elements here we have this facade louver thing and then I just go to the move tool and then pick this point over here and then I just find that point on this side so that's over here and that is supposed to overlap it perfectly and I think we're at the correct spot okay so once everything is overlapped correctly we can just cancel out this and then what I like to do is open up just the default 3d view so this is just a rendering or a 3d view so let's close that one up and we want the default 3d view uh, next uh, you should just find the angle from which this looks exactly how you want it to look so for example in my case let's say I want it to be uh, displayed from this here angle and uh, if you're happy with that now uh, we can uh, adjust the crop so the next thing that we should adjust is the crop and you can do that here in the properties panel you just scroll down a little bit you find extents and we have the crop view and the crop region visible we have to check both of them and I found if you check the bottom one the crop region visible the crop view is automatically going to get checked on so you're kind of saving one extra click which is always a good thing uh, next let's resize this thing so uh, you just use these control dots and then you kind of make it smaller just like this let's see one more and perfect now uh, for these types of presentations usually you want to have kind of a wide view because you want to include kind of three types of projects into one uh, but anyways that's what we have uh, over here and now the next thing that we need to do is we need to lock this view. So you don't want to mess it up and kind of change the orientation or the orbit. Uh, so uh, the, how you can manage that is just go here to the uh, uh, unlocked 3D view icon. So it's like a house with a little lock. And when you click on that, you have the option to save orientation uh, and lock view. And then you can give it a name. So let's just call it our... Uh, let's call it a 3D diagram. There we go. Click OK. And it's it's kind of locked in place. And here when you go to 3D views, as you can see, it's going to rename that view. Actually, let's right click on that and let's rename it and add just number one because this is just the first one. So once we have one, uh, we have to copy this because we need three because we need to create three views. So let's just right click on this, go to duplicate view. There we go. This is going to create another one. Of course, it's going to give it a terrible name so let's add number two here right click again duplicate view and now we have finally all three views again you should just right click and rename this into a diagram number three there we go so once we have three of these we have to kind of split them up so each one will show only one segment of the building now unfortunately when you're in 3d views even though they're locked in place uh, you can't use annotation detail lines or things like that to kind of uh, orient yourself and add some markers. So what they tend to do is just use the model itself to add those markers. Uh, so for example, what I'm going to do is go first here to number one, select this uh, edge and then move it towards the inside. And then I want that view to be showing just the edge of the building here perhaps let's go and use one of these markers here that we have so for example this vertical line here is the split in the roof for the final segment here so I'm going to follow that that goes up to here so it's one uh, towards the the left side from there one of these vertical uh, elements so just zoomed so I'm just going to kind of 
set it up up to there and then maybe set it up to the middle of that element perfect so this is number one this is the 3d diagram number one which is only capturing the first uh, part of this view and uh, next let's go to 3d diagram number two and for this one the uh, left edge needs to go to up to that same point so let's zoom in again find that same element so this edge of the roof is going up to here up to this vertical element so we have to go up to this one here and let's zoom in a little bit further and now we can just kind of fine-tune that and make sure that it's an, an exact point. Okay, so once we have that side completed, we have to adjust the other side. And for the other side, I'm going to use something like this edge of the building that we have over here. So, okay, we kind of lost it. Let's see, zoom in a little bit. Something like that. There we go, I'm happy with that. And then finally, let's go to our 3D diagram number three. And for this one, we just have to adjust the left side up to that same point. So let's zoom in. Perfect. Now, of course, you don't have to be too precise if this is going to be printed in small scale. Uh, but if you want to print it out large on a large panel, then make sure to be, uh, well, quite uh, precise. Anyways, once we have three of these, and as you can see, the last one is the largest. That's why. That's because I want to use that as the kind of architecture view. I wanted to kind of show off most of the architecture, so we're just going to leave that one out, uh, or leave that one as the largest one. Uh, and uh, we have some trees over here. The road, I think, it will look really nice. So let's go to the first one. So the first one, I just want to display the MEP. So what you can do in that case is just select this. Try to select this huge piece of uh, kind of uh, air ventilation technology on top. So that's going to select the whole link. So what you can do at that point is just uh, go down here to temporary height isolate, and then you can isolate that element. So there we go. We can just select that, and then uh, we can just use uh, that uh, particular element. So now, as you can see, it's uh, it's completely isolated. Uh, so uh, now, of course, this is displaying a bit uh, too much. I don't want to have the glass and the walls and so on. So what you can do in that case is just uh, go here to the view properties, go to visibility graphics overrides, and then there, uh, what you're going to do is go into edit. And here, what I like to do is go to the model categories. And as you can see, pretty much everything is checked on. So you want to make the selection of all elements. So just click here on all. It's going to select everything and then you just want to uncheck one of these and that will automatically uncheck all of those. Next you can go and click here to none which is just going to make sure that your selection is well none. Then uh, you want to go from top to bottom and just make sure to uh, check just the things that you want to have. So air terminals, ca cable trays, uh, let's see, ceilings, well we don't want that, conduct fittings, conduct, let's see what else can we add. Uh, pretty much everything that has uh, these ducts. I don't know, data devices, maybe that should be included. I'm not sure. Uh, but pretty much everything that you think is included in the MEP, make sure to check that. Flex ducts, uh, of course, everything that has a mechanical or MEP in its name. Uh, any pipes, pipe accessories, plumbing fixtures and so on. So I think we have pretty much everything. Let's see, sprinklers, specialty equipment might be good, uh, security devices, telephone devices, I don't know. So let's just hit apply, okay, and as you can see it's going to filter down the view uh, to show only the things that you, well, actually want to display which is only these MEP elements. Next, let's go to 3D diagram number two. This one is only going to show structure. So now what you want to do is, uh, well, first let's uncheck that, uh, let's uncheck that MEP linked Revit file. So for that, uh, I'm just going to go here to the properties, to the VG overrides or the visibility graphics overrides, go into edit and then go to Revit links and then you want to uncheck that uh, MEP sample file, which is linked up. Let's see, okay. And then uh, it's really easy to find the structural file because it has these 
little uh, uh, little arrows that are displaying forces. So you just select that, uh, you go to the temporary height isolate, and then you can isolate that element as well. And this is what we have. I think it has a really nice display. Okay, and finally we can go to the 3D uh, view diagram number three, which is going to keep just architecture. And in that case, uh, you can just go here to properties, visibility graphics, overrides, go into edit, and then here, just go to Revit links and uncheck both of those. So you only have the architecture elements. And also one more thing, I like to go here to uh, visual styles, go to graphic display options, uh, uncheck edges, add some shadows. And also for lighting, I like to kind of crank that up a little bit and crank down the shadows. And you're going to get something that looks like this. I think it looks a bit nicer. So anyways, now once we have all these three, it's time to kind of put them together to get our final, uh, our final file. So for that, uh, let's go down here in the project browser, uh, find the sheets, right click on sheets, go to new sheet. And I'm going to go with the A0 metric as that's the largest one. Click OK. And then you want to scroll all the way up, find those 3D views. There we go. And let's start off with the 3D diagram. And you can just place it here on the edge. You can move it kind of like that. There we go. Okay, so when you go to place the second diagram, you will notice that we get these little, uh, this little guidelines. Now this is really cool because we've used the original 3D view. Revit is going to recognize the exact position of where this file or where this view should be placed. So when you place it like this, uh, those guidelines are going to make sure that this is aligned perfectly, which is really useful. And then 3D diagram number three, that should be there. Perfect. Now, uh, you might want to select all of these just like that, and then uh, make sure to uncheck these uh, title lines. I don't think we need them. And also this has this ugly edge around, which I find extremely annoying. So I'm just going to double click in this view, uh, go to properties for that view, and just uncheck crop region visible. That's going to get rid of those lines. And then we can just uh, double click here, and we're back. So as you can see, this is now finalized. We can kind of readjust it a little bit, but in the end, this is what we get. And I think it's a really uh, cool display. And of course you can play around with it. You can maybe move it up a little bit and then uh, you can go to the entity tab, use some uh, detail lines, maybe some, uh, let's see, do we have some dashed lines? Maybe demolished lines will be dashed. Yeah, so you can use something like this to kind of represent where each one stops. And then you can, of course, add some text, add some annotation, add, uh, well, write down exactly what you want to write down and complete your uh, presentation. So that's how you create these uh, cool little diagram views that uh, show off your whole building, the MEP, the structure, as well as the uh, as well as the architectural part of the building. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you have learned something new. And if you want to learn more about either beginner uh, to intermediate stage of Revit, where you just want to have the ability to complete complex projects such as this one and produce all necessary project documentation, or if you're interested in some more advanced topics where you want to go maybe into structure, uh, figure those things out and learn more about the advanced Revit topics, check out my website website balkanarctic.com. Uh, there you can find uh, a lot of advanced courses on those topics. And you can find all of my Revit project files like this file over here uh, on my Patreon page. So that's going to be the second link in the description. So make sure to check it out. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. Make sure to subscribe, like and share this video. And I'll be back in a couple of days with another Balkan Architect Revit tutorial. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.